HSR Classic 24 presented by IMSA. The grid is now open for grid walk. The cars from Group E are out on the grid. That'll be the, the group that starts us off today. Jim Roller down here on the grid will be joined shortly by Andrew Marriott. Don't want to walk in front of that photo, that's for sure. And we're going to be down here interviewing all the stars that will be driving these great cars. I'm going to start with a couple of unsung heroes over here. Look who I found, Brad Kettler. What's up, Roller? How are you, man? What's up, Roller? You spent a lot of time with this car. What kind of memories does it bring back? The car I'm talking about, of course, is the number 38 champion liveried uh, Audi. Uh, it's, it's what's all, it like to see it out here running? Oh, it's fantastic. And I mean, me and my, me and Mr. Raffoff here were just talking about this incredible grid of, of Le Mans cars here. I mean, it looks like an ALMS grid in the old days, and we're excited about it. And these, you know, these cars have a big place in my heart. I mean, obviously, I spent a lot of time in them and won a bunch of races with them and, and so forth. So what? how can you not love something yeah. like that? And it's just really an honor to get to come out here and to get to, to run the thing with somebody like Andy work with Bobby Green, my old number one mechanic. It's like going home again. And uh, we did a little group picture of champion guys the other day, and I think there was 11 or 12 of us here dispersed in the paddock, and a lot of talent there, a lot of good memories. Yeah, that's great. Mark Raffoff, uh, what a grid, huh? Pretty uh, impressive. What a grid for the whole 24. It's very impressive. Yeah. Very nice. Best entry we've ever had for this event. Um, now, a lot of these cars in period didn't get to race here. What's it like to see them for you, who uh, has been around this place since you were 16 years old? Cool cars are cool cars. It exactly. doesn't matter if you saw them before or not, so <laughs> it's all good to me. You know, I'll say one thing, Brad and I were just talking about uh, some of the unsung people that don't get the credit sometimes, but the guys that own these cars oh, yeah. and maintain them and allow them to be out here, for those of us who remember them, uh, as well as new fans, should get a big hearty pat on the back for doing it but this is this is really cool to see these cars actually running and some of them being as old as they are running rather well yeah now they're racing an investment aren't they i mean above and beyond what you said they're they're putting their investment out there on the racetrack yeah they are because not only is it investment economically you know they've made an investment in history and nobody ever wants to see that go away so you have to be extra careful yeah and also uh, an investment of heart, because I think every one of the folks that owns one of these has a certain amount of passion that you don't learn, you're either born with or you're not. Oh yeah, you have to be born with it to do what they do, but you know, when you look at what they do and saving this stuff and keeping it the way it should be and getting the right guys who used to drive them to drive them again and having them guys come, doesn't get any better than that. Now, Mark and I have known each other since I was about 18 and you were about 20. <laughs> yeah, about right. <laughs> about right. Um, you've just written the definitive book about IMSA because you joined the group in 74, I believe, when you were 16. Uh, you're still with IMSA. How's the book going? Well, uh, the first uh, printing sold out rather rapidly. The second one's well on its way. There's a third one being done for the holidays. so. It's good enough that the publisher asked for the next 10-year book, so that's underway, too. So the, nice. there's another one. That'll be, as you know, Jim, the, the, the juicy one, so to speak. <laughs> 1990 to 1999 was an interesting decade. It certainly was. racing in the United States. <laughs> so that's next. You and I spent a lot of time hiding under our respective desks yes, during that correct. decade, didn't we? <laughs> that's where we learned that... Uh, being under the table is sometimes the best place be, to be, you know. So. All right, good luck. You're going to see, right. gentlemen, start your engines yeah, in a few minutes, so I'll come back and see right. you. Okay, man. Looking All right, enjoy to the grid. That's oh, Mark Raffoff, ladies and gentlemen. That's definitely a, a, a book that you want to get. Where can they get it? Uh, you can uh, get it on Amazon. You can get it on Octane. Well, you can get everything on Amazon. Yeah, well, that's true. It's there. I think they have a pretty good price on it. And Octane Press is the publisher, so you can go to octanepress.com and also get a good direct online. But online's the easiest way because it's pretty big and got a lot of great pictures, and it just shows up at your front door, and you don't have to carry it anywhere. Oh, that's that, that's a good plan. Thank you, Mark. Let's uh, see who else we can stumble into here. We've got Pescarolos. We've got Judds. Let's go. Let's go over here and see. You good? Yeah. David Dunlap. Dave Porter. How are you? Well. Good to see you again. Yep. Came up and visited us in the booth early in the weekend. 
Today's Green Flag Day, though. How are you feeling? I'm feeling good, very good. I mean, the car is absolutely sensational. I just have to bring my A game because I'm surrounded by people here who are, you know, the best of the best, quite honestly. If you, do, if you just look around you. And um, it'll be tough, but we'll give it our best shot and we'll see what we can do. Now, you've got Joao Barbosa standing by if the weather gets inclement. But your plan is to do this uh, all four races by yourself. You want to win this thing on your own, don't you? I really want to do that, yes. Yeah. I mean, I think the weather's going to be okay. So Joao's ready to go if I need him. Um, I hope I don't. But, uh, I, mean, I, I dread to think what he would do in this car. He did a 38-1 in a DP car yesterday on a track that was slippery. So I, I think he'd probably do a 29 or something in this. Now, you were talking earlier in the week about trying to dial some of the downforce out. but some of the mixing conditions that we had. Were you able to do that, or has it still got the high downforce packet? No, we left the high downforce on. I think in this cool conditions, and for, for a gentleman driver, the higher downforce is definitely um, more sensible. That's too big of an investment, isn't it? <laughs> it is. <laughs> yeah. Now, you're on standby for the Peugeot, but you're also in the number nine Action Express cars, so you've got to, you're gonna be watching the clouds, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's, um I mean, I raced with David uh, here in uh, two two years ago. We went up winning in the in the Pescarol that's on the pole right now. So uh, David called me and uh, he said, like, if the weather is kind of sketchy, will you help me out in the Peugeot? I was like, I was like, I hope it rains, you know, at some point, so I can drive this car. But you know, it's just uh, just a great time here and uh, having a good time so far. Have you had any seat time in it yet? I had seat time, but not on the track. I, Ooh. Uh, yeah, I know it's it's going to be very tricky. I, I spent a little bit of time trying to know all the controls in the car and getting the best seat position. That's about the only seat time I had so far. So, but we'll see. Hopefully, the weather stays nice for everybody, so everybody can enjoy the, the race. Well, that's all right. I can remember in 1983 when AJ Floyd came and got in Preston Hens Porsche, much to the chagrin of Bob Wallach, and sped out of the pits. And Wallach didn't even know who that big. <laughs> fat American was that had gotten into his car and then AJ went out and set the fastest lap in the wet so uh, I expect the same, same kind of thing from you. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. I'm down here with Travis Enga and Jeff McKee and uh, Travis is right here in front of his uh, absolutely delightful and wonderful Audi R8. This is one of my favorites. How much fun is it to drive around this place? It is absolutely fabulous here because for one reason it's a really fast car so you've got real long straights and you can open it up here. So it, it is marvelous, uh, handles well. I like the open cockpit, uh, you know, it's just fun. I mean, we get, you know, real high speed coming by here start finish and then you slow down to, I don't know, what, 90 maybe through the first turn one. Yeah, it's really fun. Now you've got a long night ahead of you and some absolutely fantastic competition this year. Uh, how, how much has this event grown for you? It seems like uh, a couple of years ago you were the, 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 the car to beat and now you've, you've got your hands full. Well, it's not so much the car. The car's quite competitive because you'll see uh, Andy Wallace is up, up ahead of me quite a bit. And uh, so it's more the driver. And uh, <laughs> he's being, he's being modest. Well, well, I'm 75, so I'm, you know, I'm having a great time out here. But there's a lot of pro drivers, current and, and recently ex pro drivers ahead of me. So I'll, I'll go to school on them if I can, and otherwise just have fun. All right, good luck, Jeff McKee. What are you going to be piloting? Well, I uh, was running the sprint races in my GT40. That, that's and, right. I uh, had a great uh, race yesterday and was able to take the win. And it was really cool because the movie dropped and it was perfect timing. So uh, it's been funny today. So I've, people have been coming by getting my autograph. <laughs> that feels good. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, unfortunately, today's uh, first sprint race, uh, the throttle stuck wide open. And I just had to grab the kill switch and save the car. And that was the end of my day. But I'm here with these beautiful cars, wonderful people, and I'm having a blast. And he's got his driving suit on. I'm sure he's got his license with him, so if anybody needs some help, I'm sure you'd I'd volunteer. I'd be happy to help. <laughs> we'll enjoy the day. Thank Thanks, you. Jeff. Okay. Well, I've got a uh, Hall of Fame crew chief turned driver, Ray Evernham. He's all bundled up here. <laughs> I understand, though. Have you talked to uh, your lovely bride back home? I've talked to mine. Apparently, it's a lot colder back in Charlotte than it is here. Yeah, I think she's actually gone north to get away from the cold. <laughs> so, uh, so I don't know, but yeah, it's uh, it's a little bit a little bit chilly today. Now, th this is kind of your wheelhouse now, these vintage cars. You've got that wonderful collection in Mooresville, besides all your TV work. Uh, 
this is probably the best turnout we've ever had for this event. Why is this event catching on and growing so much? Well, I think people are really interested in, in the cars and the character and the personality. You know, unfortunately, as the automotive world grows, the cars seem to be losing their personality. But this takes us back to a time where you can really mix the, the pure racing, why we race, along with the technology. There's some of the most incredible cars that I've ever seen here. You know, for me, I've been racing 40 years and all over the world. I'm walking up and down pit road here with my camera just like any other race fan because, uh, you know, you just don't get to see the cars or the people. We have met some incredible people this weekend. This is quite an event. Andrew, I've got Patrick Simon who is uh, leaning up against this resplendent number 333 Mercedes SLS. You guys have been, uh, to coin a phrase, kicking some butt all weekend. Uh, what do you got in store for them now with the 24-hour race at hand? Uh, main topic is to have fun and enjoy racing in the U.S., you know. As uh, you come with with your best friend to have some racing in Daytona, it's cool, and um, yeah, everything else comes automatically. So it's a, it's a great pleasure. It's a great fun to be here. What's the part that you find so magical about racing at this place? You know, after after I had some couple of years in racing professionally, then I'd swap over like you to commentate for the German television, all the stuff. And I never had a chance really to go for the big ones in my racing career. So I go a lot of on the Nordschleife, a lot of Carrera Cup, Super Cup and stuff like that. But never raced here. But with the historic racing, I did Le Mans Classic, won it overall. Now I'm here. So that's, that's the magic of, of all this stuff and see so many fantastic people, so many fantastic cars. It's uh, unbelievable. It's really, really fantastic to see that. I'm also racing an old 3-liter RSR here. To see all the periods of cars, all the fun, all the passion the people have here, nowhere else to say. Now, what's this car like on the banking? Obviously, it, it likes the banking and the speed that you two have shown throughout the weekend. But for you as a driver, what's this car like on the banking? You know, the Mercedes um, SLS, in general, the GT3 cars from Mercedes, you feel so safe inside the car. There's never ever a situation you are scared about driving that car here with nearly 300 kilometers per hour. So it's a fantastic with the front mid-engine. The V8 goes really massively. Um, it's it's just pure enjoy. One minute 47 enjoyment every lap. Ah, there you go. A minute 47 seconds. Probably the most fun minute 47 seconds you've ever had, right? Yeah. All right. Good luck. Thank you very much, and uh, thanks for all the corner workers, for all the fans, for all everybody to make that possible here. Thank you. I've got another guy who's been around this place a lot. Earlier we talked to Butch Leitzinger, and uh, I've stumbled on the man who gave us Butch Leitzinger, his dad. Welcome back. Oh, it's good to be back. Always good to be back. That's the voice of Bob Leitzinger, who, uh, how many times did you race here? I have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> No idea at all. What do you think of this uh, field uh, we've got this uh, is assembled? A, this is a fun weekend to come here. There's so much to do, uh, everybody to see, and uh, a lot of cars that we miss. Butch, uh, it's not often I see that grin that big. <laughs> <laughs> Real he proud. Told, he told me earlier it felt really good to be recognized as much as he's been recognized here. So, well, uh, so where are you going to watch from? Uh, down at the coach, uh, down okay. in West Bend. So you're not Capcom for the kid anymore, huh? Oh, no, no, they won't let me get near a phone or a radio, radio. anymore. <laughs> well, glad to see you here. Glad, thanks, uh, Jim. Glad you're uh, getting out and enjoying this side of the sport again. Very much. All right, yeah, thanks. Thank Bob you. Leitzinger, enjoy the show, father of Butch. Hey, Butch, you've driven both of these cars, haven't you? I have, yes, yes. <laughs> and they're both really, really good. <laughs> Which one do you think has the advantage? You know, well, actually, like we qualified, I think, within a couple uh, yeah. hundredths of a second of each other. So I'd say they're about as evenly matched as you can get. Now, the two cars I'm talking about, of course, are the Pescarolo and the Audi, the champion ADG Audi. So, yeah, if he knows, he knows. Uh, is it any, uh, you kind of know what the competition can do? Is that, does that help? Well, you know, it was actually interesting. Yesterday, uh, I was behind Andy, and, and there is some difference to the, uh, uh, Andy was able to put the power down a little bit better than, than we were. I think we might have had a little bit better top speed. Um, but it's, it's, it's pretty close between the two. All right, well, good luck. Andrew, I've got the boss, David Hinton. Uh, congratulations. Five years uh, you've been putting this event on, and each year it seems to grow and get better and better. What's your secret? 
Oh, uh, it's we, just us. You yeah, can all right, tell me. Yeah, no. it, well, we're very fortunate. These people from around the world decided to bring their cars here for this event. Um, I didn't even know how to say Pescarola when I started this event, and now we've got three of them. Two Audis, the Peugeot. It's, it's breathtaking to stand here and think in five years we're at this point. Um, very humbling, um, but you know, it's just fantastic. Spectators everywhere. The Bully Brigade bus corral down there is phenomenal. Um, but I need to thank the entire HSR staff who have done a fantastic job preparing for this event and working through the event and also the SCCA corner workers are out there going to be for 24 hours. Um, looks like the weather's going to hold off. We're going to be good. Um, and I just hope these guys, you know, put on a great show. Besides these prototypes, we've got these great gull wings. The, the eclectic nature of the field here is just stunning. Yeah, it really is. Uh, the reason the gull wings up front. Yeah, because of the award. He won the award for the corner workers' favorite uh, car of the weekend award, which is which is great. So, I mean, probably the oldest car in the race is sitting here in front of the newest cars of the race. So now, now, you mentioned the, uh, the, the the Volkswagen group that's here. You've got a Morgan group. You've got uh, uh, all kinds of things going on around the event. And that's probably the thing I unfortunately had to miss last year because of other work commitments. But I come back this year and I see a lot more of that stuff that gives this event more of that festival atmosphere. That's That's got to be very satisfying as well, I would think. Oh, yeah. I mean, we want to give the spectator good value for money. So we need just more than on-track action. We want them to be able to see car corrals. We've got the Haggerty Cars and Coffee this morning, obviously the Bully Brigade, like we mentioned. So, you know, we want this to be a, a kind of a motorsport experience, you know, a bit of everything. Now, you're very deep into the vintage business. You're pre pre preparing cars all the time. You, uh, you getting any time behind the wheel, or is uh, being uh, in charge of this event just too much to uh, give you some, some seat time? No, I'm going to sneak out there. Yeah. You know, I, I, I call that field work. Oh, you know, yeah, okay. You, know, yeah, you got to do your research. Yeah, do my little research. Um, I'll probably drive with uh, Bob Summerhour tonight in the Ford Falcon. And then I'm pretty sure that uh, Dean and Damon DeSantis will ask me to drive the Lola T70 again in the middle of the night. Cause, well, that won't be bad. No. I, if they ask me, I'll probably say yes. <laughs> Much like uh, McGee, I saw him earlier walking around in his driving suit with a license in hand. So. Oh, there's a lot of those. <laughs> <laughs> well, enjoy your 24 hours, continued success, and uh, let's hope for a, a safe night. No, thank you, and thank you to you guys for all you do, and uh, all the HSR staff, once again, they've, they've done a phenomenal job. All right, thank you. That was David Hinton, the uh, head of the uh, HSR, and a uh, very successful event. Uh, and I'm not just saying it because we're here. This event is starting to grow in stature throughout the world. And it's because of the hard work of not only David, but his staff and many other folks who helped put this on. I spoke to Mark Graffoff earlier, and he is here representing IMSA to give, as we like to say in the business, those most famous words in racing. Right now. <laughs> right now. Now. Yes. It's you. It's me. Go. Drivers! Start your engines! Not your first rodeo either. <laughs> Congratulations to all these competitors. Paul, it's go time. Back to you. Ha, 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 ha.